Well, we're back on our 23-footer, and we've come along pretty good. We've got both chine logs in it now, and uh, that's really an accomplishment. And uh, I think you've, you've seen how we went about it. It's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to be surfacing off the chine logs right here to accept the sole pretty soon. Well, the next thing I want to show you is this little setup we got here with the Royobi electric plane. I mean, this thing's pretty cool. We've got a sink drain on here. You know, that's like from a bathroom sink, I think, and it fits right on the chute perfect. Um, we've shown you that many times. I use it for a handle like, well, I've got a different handle on it today. I've got this piece of plywood that's reaching all the way over to the other chine log on the other side. So what I'm going to do right now is plane this chine log down. Now when we ripped it out, it was ripped out to 90 degrees. So the side of the boat's got quite an angle on it and uh, that 90 degrees isn't going to work for us. So we're going to plane this thing down until it lines up with the other side. This is the tool we're going to use right here. We're going to plane it down till it's in direct alignment with the other side. We're going to do the other side too because we're going to put sole planks right on there and fasten them right down. So we have to have it in alignment. I used to do all this by hand and you know, it was wonderful. I enjoyed it, but we've got power now. So when you've got power, you use it. And this really does make it easy, and obviously much, much faster than if I was going to do it with hand planes. Uh, the other thing is, I could make a depth mistake if I had the plane set way too deep or something, possibly, but I can't make an angle mistake because it's being controlled from the other side of the boat. Caleb is working up and down with me as I slide forward and backwards. He slides forwards and backwards, so it's always at the proper angle. I can take all the meat I want to take off right down to very, very close. And then I'm going to wait a little tiny bit on that very last tiny bit until I get the side frames on it and roll the chine and the side plank and into position exactly right. And then I'll touch it up with a hand plank. Well, let's check it really quick. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of work on the other side. But uh, I'm just going to stand it up on there. And boy, that bears down there really nice. Real nice right there and real nice right in there. So that's pretty much it on that with the electric. Uh, we're going to stand the frames up and uh, put a little rib band around them. That might tune this up a tiny bit like that. So we could be a quarter degree off or something like that. But what I'm going to do is then go at it with a hand plane and just tune it up with a hand plane. So now I've moved over to the other side and we're going to check it out over here. It just needs a little bit of work over there. It's a little loose right over here and I got a black magic marker line on there so that once I take that line off, I don't want to go much further than that. So we're going to check it here. We check it up in here. A little work to do here. Maybe up in here. So let's just put this away, Caleb, and we are going to get started. Once I've done quite a bit of work on one side, I'll infrared the machine and work on the other side because I have to work the two sides down pretty much at the same time in order to get the angles to work out properly. Let's give it one more test here. Oh, beautiful. Right up in here. Look at that. That system works so well. It just makes things much, much easier. You know, we're just, just pleased as can be with this. We're going to touch it up a little bit later, but uh, now the thing for us to do is to get some frames ready and get dropping them down here. Well, here we are in our wood shop over here where our machines are, and we're standing right next to the joiner right here. We're preparing some of these frames. These are cutoffs off the ends of like chine logs and rails and different things. It's all brand new stock. It's very nice. Some of it's a little curved or a little twisted or something like that. And I have to take care of all of that. I can't do any ripping or any planing in a, in a surface planer or anything like that until one side is flat and true and not twisted or curved. Then I can take it from there and I can do numbers of different things with it. I can joint, I can join it square, I can rip it square, all kinds of different things. And every piece is going to take a little bit of a different technique. But basically what I'm going to use is the joiner, the table saw, and then a surface planer. The joiner is actually one of my favorite pieces of equipment because it sets the foundation for doing everything else properly on a nice square and straight piece. 
You know, you don't go to a table saw and rip something that's already curved. You're going to expect it to come out curved. This is a tool that straightens things. It takes the twist out of things. It makes things 90 degrees, different angles. There's just so much you can do with it. And there's technique involved. When I push a longer piece through and I want to move my hands on it, you'll see me stop and draw the piece back so I can move my hands without getting a lump on the outfeed table. Now one of the other things I've got going here is uh, I'm using the joiner just as it stands. I don't have an extension on the outfeed table like hooked up with a bench because otherwise I wouldn't be able to push the piece of wood that I'm jointing past halfway on the end of the outfeed table and then having my end tip up to me where I can grab it with my thumb and my fingers, you know, and then I can just draw it back. Very convenient. Once I think I'm getting very close to getting it nice and straight, I'm going to pick it up and take a sighting on it. You know, take a quick sighting. If I think it needs another pass, I'll give it another pass. Usually, when I think I'm done, I'm done. All right. Well, we've got the jointing finished here. I've jointed them on one side. I've got the twist out of them, the curve out of them. And there's all different ways of going about those things, of getting curves out. Uh, is something that you need to be taught. It's taken me many years to figure out how to use a jointer properly, actually. It's a very, very uh, interesting piece of equipment, actually, and you can do so many things on it, it's incredible. So, you know, we've gotten the twist out of the pieces and the curvature, and then what we've done is we've also jointed it 90 degrees to that first thing. So I've got two nice, flat, 90-degree corners and now I can go from there. I'm going to do some ripping on the table saw and I'm going to set the table saw at two and three eighths. That's the width of the frame. So I'm going to rip them at two and three eighths, and that's just a rough cut. They're going to be sent through the planer, obviously, afterwards. Now I'm going to readjust my table saw to cut at an inch and three eighths. Now that's just a rough cut. I'm going to send them through the planer afterwards to an inch and five sixteenths, but. Uh, Ripping like this, you have to be very careful. You know, I move my hands exactly the same way almost every single time. It's a matter of habit and uh, muscle memory and things like that. So what you see me do, maybe not everybody would like to do or should do, but uh, I prefer it this way. I don't want to use a push stick because I have to keep putting the push stick down to grab the piece with my thumb to haul it back to me. You know, I don't have any time for pushing them out on an outfeed table and then going around and collecting them afterwards. It just isn't going to work for me. I want to use that piece. I want to stack it up right where I picked it up from, and that's how I'm doing it. I'm pushing it through by hand, no push stick, tipping it on the outfeed table, and hauling it back. Now, I don't know if you've seen anything like this before, but uh, this is something that I've done for years, and I haven't seen anybody else really do it, and that is I put the piece of wood in the planer first, then I crank it up until it starts to plane. Now, it's not going to plane the full length of it because it's halfway through already, but once it planes the tail end of it, I just pick it back up and send it through again, and it comes out consistent. So I've planed them all on edge for, I'm going to do exactly the same thing in thickness. I'm going to lay them down on the side, crank the planer up a little bit till it touches it, run it through, measure it real quick, adjust it, and clean the thickness. So it's just a way that I handle the machine. It isn't much different than anybody, but it is a tiny bit different. Well, we've got all our frames cut out here, and I'm just gonna measure them up one last time, an inch and five sixteenths by two and a quarter. That's exactly what we wanted. I'm going to make a stop over at the chop saw really quickly. I'm going to chop one end of the frames off. I want a nice clean end on the frame with no checking or anything else like that because that little piece that 
hangs down inside the chine has to be in very, very good shape. The next step in our process is over here at the drill press. We're just going to drill a one inch hole through the frame. It's just a little detail above the chine yet. It doesn't have to fit right down against the chine perfectly. It actually makes it quite nice and it stops the chine from letting the water slide along behind the frames. We've got a little jig set up on the drill press right here. It's just a fence and allows me to put the frame up against the fence and have each frame be exactly the same. And I'm sliding them up against a nail right there to control the length. That's all that's necessary right there. It's just a very temporary jig. It works perfectly. Now I've got a little bevel set, and I've set it at the same angle as the top of the chine log is to the side planking. And I'm just going to draw a little line from the hole that I drilled over to the inboard side of the frame, and I'll just cut that off with a bandsaw by eye. The first cut is just made by eye following the line that we made with the bevel set. Now we have to stop at the center of the circle right there, we can't cut past that radius. And then the second cut is really made with just a fence on the bandsaw. It's just an inch and a half away from the outboard side of the planking. And, and uh, you know, we just push it up, same thing, cut the corner block right out of there, and go on to the next one. Then Caleb's just going to take a quarter and draw a little radius around the end of the frame right there. And we're just going to follow that with a bandsaw. We just nub that off in little clips on the bandsaw because we can't follow that radius right around with the bandsaw blade. Then we're just going to take a block and some sandpaper and just smooth up that end cut because it's all little nibs and it's not perfectly consistent. So that, that rounds it off really nice, makes it pretty. And we'll sand the corners of it a little tiny bit and just prepare it to be installed. Well, we've finished getting out all the framing and here's one of them right here. Now, it's two and a quarter inches by an inch and five sixteenths. It's pretty healthy. And uh, at the very bottom, the chine is an inch and a half. So I've cut this notch out of an inch and a half so that this reaches right around the chine log like that on the inside. And uh, I wanted it two and a quarter inches thick because I don't want this piece to be like a quarter inch thick or even a half an inch thick because it would be too flexible on the end. And the idea of it is to take the roll out of the chine log. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. But, uh, you know, this thing has to be healthy. There's a few other things about them. You don't want to have the medullary rays in the end of the wood going exactly in line with the screws that hold it down because when you fasten it down and tighten the screw up, it could split the end of this. You just don't want that. So, you know, you kind of be a little fussy about the grain, maybe 45 degrees across or whatever, that works really good. So you can get that out of all kinds of end pieces and different things. And these were cut from pieces, you know, cut from end pieces from the chine logs and the rails and different things like that. You know, it's all the same wood that we're using on the rest of the boat, but, uh, you know, so we've gotten out quite a few of them. And we've got them in the boat here on the port side, and uh, I think it looks fantastic. We spaced them a couple of different ways and finally arrived at this because one way I tried to space it, I was getting the frame clashing with the mold. So, you know, I think this worked out really nicely. And I'm going to show you what I did there, you know, how I divided it up, for, you know, where I wanted to put them and how I hung the frames plum. You know, this is a conical section actually right here. So you're trying to hang those frames plumb in the, into that conical section. So, you know, there's a method to all of that stuff. And I put a perimeter around it up here to control all the ends of the frames, you know, so they're not just flailing around or anything or in and out. And uh, one of the reasons for that is, is that I want to make sure that I've got this chine log rolled in the right position this way. I'm going to hold this up and demonstrate. You know, I want that chine log to be 
tuned up and made sure that it doesn't roll any longer and that's what these things do. So once I put a perimeter around it controls the whole shape of the side of the boat and uh, then I can go and get started putting the sole on. Now let me just show you another thing here. I'm going to hold this straight edge up against the plank right there and you'll notice it just lands right on there really nice perfectly. Same thing here. Well when I bent that plank around uh, originally it had a lot of cupping in it like that but once I've added the frames to it the frames have taken the cupping out of it and it's also rolled the chine in position like I said so this is what we're after like this because I could take it over on the other side and show you on the other side that it would have a big space in it that the plank is cupped this way so you know that's what we're out to make sure that doesn't happen. Now I'm over on the starboard side and you can see that there's a little bit of cupping right up in here the other side of the boat the whole plank was cupped all the way across and that straightened that right out. Now this side is just like up in here, like I said, that's mostly due to the rolling of the chine. So when we put the frames in here, we'll be able to roll that chine over a little tiny bit and get rid of most of that. Computer. Plus 430 is 2580. 2580, right there. Yeah. Now that we've got all our frames out, the next thing to do is hang them. We're going to take a metric tape and divide the length of the chine log up into equal sections so that the frames will be all equally distance apart at the chine logs. And we're using a metric tape because it's so much easier to divide a length on a metric system or a tens system than it would be in feet and inches. Yep. I've divided that around the very outside of the boat because that's the only way that I can keep the tape measure into position. It won't work on the inside. So then I just have to square the marks over from the outside to the very inside of the chine log where I'm going to hang the frames. Right there. Perfect. Just right. Okay. Then Caleb and I are going to hang the frames on those mocks, but we're only going to put one screw on the very end of the frame against the chine log. That way the frame is still mobile and I can plumb them later on. That's it. Move the clamp. Now I just want to show you very quickly here that uh, you can see that the frame is barren against the chine log here. But the frame's not barren against the plank and back here. It's all supposed to be in line with each other. That's all because the plank is a little bit cupped and the frame or the chine is a little bit rolled. So you see what happens when we push this in. You can see it roll the chine log like that. And as, as a matter of fact, once you grab a clamp and clamp it right on there, you know, just uh, even if it's not exactly in the right spot yet, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's good. See, now, now you can see it bare the full length of the plank. We've clamped the cup right out of the plank completely and the frame's barren right up against the chine log really nicely. You could see it roll the chine log as we clamped this uh, top part of the uh, plank to the frame right here. And uh, as we add the frames and we had some up forward already, it's kind of a cumulative effect on the side plank. It, it gets that roll right out of it. So that's exactly what we're trying to do and it's going to come out nice and neat. It's kind of done in a production fashion because, you know, I don't want to keep changing hats. I hold the frame up, Caleb clamps it in place, I drill a hole and put a screw in it and we move on to the next one. We're trying to go down there along as fast as we can so we don't just waste any time. Well now we've got all the frames hung right where they belong. We fasten them to the chine with just one screw so they're still mobile this way. We're going to swing them back and forth, we, we're going to hang a line on the other side pretty much opposite of this and then we're going to sight this frame to the line so we can get them to swing back and forth and become parallel to that line and that'll be plumb and that's exactly what we're trying to do we're trying to plumb the frames because we've determined uh, <laughs> that this is going to be the angle of the boat in the water of course upside down but uh, you know this is kind of sloped downhill right now and these are not 90 degrees to that but they're 90 degrees to the water line supposedly Now Caleb's got that string hanging alongside that frame on the other side and I am going to plumb this frame up to that string like so. When I get it there, I'll just put a clamp on it up here. 
and then I can drill two holes and put two screws in with the clamp on, remove the clamp, and drill them and install the last screw. Now I'm just going to move forward doing exactly the same thing. The only difference is, is that as the boat gets narrower up forward, I have to hang the string in a different position on the other side, not against the same exact frame that I'm trying to do on this side. I need to hang that string at a 90 degree angle to the chine log on my side. That way, when I sight it to that string, it will be in the proper position up that conical section up forward. That looks good. All right. We've got all the frames into position at this point and fastened down to the side planking and one screw into the chine rod. So now it's time to just take and drill that second hole through the tang and the end of the frame into the chine log and sink a second screw into every frame. second. Okay, our next step is to stretch a batten around the very heads of the frames on the outside and clamp it on. That batten just coordinates all those frames into a really nice shape at the shear. What I'm going to do now is clamp a piece of wood right straight across this mold right here to keep the sides lined up with the mold like this because you can see how flexible it is. I can't just allow this to be anywhere when I put the bottom on it or the sole on it. So we're going to tame it with a piece going right across here and clamp that on. Then we're going to add one more piece up forward spanning across that forward mold to coordinate those frames into the shape of the mold. Like that. That's exactly the way we want it, right there. That looks good. That looks good. All right, well, we've got all the frames hung on both sides of the boat, port and starboard. Uh, we're ready to put a next side plank on if we wanted to. I probably won't do that until I put the bottom on or the sole on, but uh, at this point, we've got the whole thing tuned up so that it's not, you know, in or out like this too much because it has to be tame up here to get this angle to be exactly right here. So, you know, we're on top of it and uh, it's looking pretty good. We're pretty anxious to get the sole on it and uh, just keep right on going, you know, it's fun for us. But today I wanted to show you another tool. Now I've got a tool right here that I picked up somewhere years ago and I don't have any idea where I got it at this point. And I don't know what it is. It's an ads of some sort. But the purpose for it, I'm not sure. It seems to me that it's made for mortising, but I'm not even sure of that. Maybe mortising on log buildings, homes, or marine use, like on uh, the deck timbers of a ship or something along those lines. I don't know whether or not it was made for swinging like this, you know, like an ads. It is an ads of some sort. And I don't know whether or not it was made for striking because this is quite a large end on it right here. It seems like as if you would hold the handle and strike it with a mallet. But like I said, I'm not sure. That's quite a nice tool. Somebody took a lot of time to make it. They forged onto a really nice hardened piece of steel on the end of it here. And uh, you can see that that hasn't even rusted. This part has because it's a different type of metal. I've used it for a few things, you know, and it was successful for what I used it for, but I don't know what it's for. And uh, I hope you guys do. And if you do, let me know, will you?